Across the globe, there are places which aspire to provide the most exclusive of holiday experiences. Luxurious. What I am doing is the best you can get in the moment. Adventurous. Oh my God, lions, oh my goodness. And sometimes quirky. He is one of the most famous guests and he has a fan club. He has an Instagram of over 10,000 followers. But what challenges do these hotels face and how do they strive to be a top destination? Anybody could have bricks and mortar in the right location, but in order to stay relevant, I do think it's important to innovate. With the exclusive access, we go behind the scenes. All right, now let me take you to one of our specialty suites. Following the staff who work around the clock. Guys, we need to be fast, yeah? The guest is waiting. To deliver to their guests whatever it takes to impress. When you go from one room to the other, you go into another piece of art. Notice the view is like no other in the world. All our guests love fantasy and happiness. We take care of every guest and make them feel like kings. From Asia to Arizona, Kenya to the Caribbean, Dubai to India. Step behind the scenes of some of the world's most incredible hotels. In the frozen landscape of Northern Europe, two hotels have used their extreme locations and temperatures to offer experiences you can only get in a few places around the world. In Sweden, a hotel built from scratch each year made only of snow and ice. The 29th version is about to open its icy doors, enticing visitors from across the globe. It's a part of the magic of the ice hotel. People are coming for the experience of the ice and the art. By combining unique engineering and artistic creativity, this hotel is more than just a place to lay your head. We have the pure material of the river, and the artists are not allowed to bring in any other material than snow and ice. In Finland, a hotel in the middle of the Arctic forest. Something which I couldn't uh, get my head around is quietness. Resort is actually famous for a sound of silence. Not in many parts of the world you can actually experience. Where the owner invented an unusual type of accommodation that's turned out to be this hotel's most popular to sleep in a glassy glue and view northern lights all night long. That is how the resort became world famous. The Ice Hotel in Yukosjavi in Sweden is one of the most iconic hotels in the world. Made simply of two materials that nature provides in abundance here, snow and ice. This hotel, 200 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle, has for the last 29 years attracted millions of visitors who come to see how a hotel made of freezing water provides guests with a totally unique experience unlike anywhere else. What I hope for, for when a guest leaves the hotel is that it exceeded their expectation. I believe in contrast, you know, comfort, adventure, and service, and all these things. It should be a little bit, you know, of an adventure. Although there's a permanent hotel on site, Ice Hotel 365, each year a brand new structure is created to replace the previous years. Each of the 35 rooms is designed by artists from around the world, and the 29th iteration is due to open to its first guests in just one day's time. From the very beginning, our founder had the idea of creating a, a concept that is um, the most sustainable there is. Because of, of his nature, we built every season a new hotel of ice and snow, and at the end of the season, it goes back to the nature. So that's a relationship with the nature has always been in our DNA, has always been the major aspect of our concept. Arnie, originally a sculptor from Stockholm and part owner of the Ice Hotel, is one of the people behind the concept and development of both hotels. 
When I came along here like 25 years ago, would I imagine, I thought, you know, I was just uh, taken by the environment here and what people were doing here. Jukkasjärvi, the name of the village, means coming together by the river. It's a meeting place. It used to be a meeting place for the Sami people. And now it's an international meeting place for our guests. They come from all over the world. And for our artists and builders and staff. It's like an international meeting place at the river. Ice Hotel 29 is only open for four months of the year from December to April and will welcome visitors from all over the globe. So we are here in the reception, we're going into the main hall. There's still some stuff to do. Everything has to be cleaned out and done so we can welcome our guests. So we have this, still we have the sky behind us. It's an open uh, arch and on the other side here we have the ceremony hall where they will work until Christmas. Getting ready for the opening has had its challenges and not ones that the hotel can control. As we had a hard time because of the weather. You know, sometimes it happens, winter comes late, and so it was really warm, and it was like no snow, and there was, we need minus degrees to, to produce the snice, and we need minus degrees to build the ice hotel. And it took a long time, so we were really nervous about this, but at last it came, and, but you know, the staff, the builders, everyone, and the artists, they've done an amazing job to so we, I'm now sure we can open on time, but it's been really tricky. Arnie isn't the only one feeling the pressure. Down the hall in the ocean room, father and daughter Jonathan and Marnie Green from London in the UK are two artists chosen to create an art suite for 29. Over 150 people applied to create an art suite and only 15 were chosen. They've been working on their concept for the past 12 days. We didn't really expect to get the chance to do it, but we uh, came up with the design and um, we got accepted, so here we are. Making a hotel room simply of snow and ice, snice, is no easy feat. I'm going to have to do this with my bare hands. No, you don't. I'm going to, just, to, just so that it. I can really... You'll regret it. ..feel that it's gone in. We kind of thought about various ideas for rooms and we had, a, had a look online to see some of the other uh, art suites that have been done and um, realised that we needed to come up with something quite spectacular. So this year we have uh, architects, uh, interior designers, product designers, painters, light designers, fashion designers, what more? Sculptors, of course. So really variety and every year it is. John and Marnie won a place based on their creative ocean design. We're both interested, but Marnie particularly, in the environment. And we decided that something to do with the oceans, obviously all, all the sort of pollution aspect at the moment is quite big news. So we thought, what better to make something out of water that is... Share a message. Uh, share a message and create a, an ocean. So this is one of the fish that we made at home. Uh, we sculpted it in clay and took a mould, brought the moulds to Sweden with us. Um, and the plan was to have about 12 on each side, but I think we're going to have a few less now. Uh, and we're going to light them as well. We have the pure material of the river, and the artists are not allowed to bring in any other material than snow and ice, and see what's possible to create from this basic, from the river, and then being in, in the cycle of nature. And we know that all this is done for just four months and it is returning back to the river. There are 15 art suites at the hotel and guests who come here pay over 500 pounds for the experience of staying in one of the world's most unusual rooms. Anyone can apply to create an art suite, but with only 15 suites to be made, competition is fierce. To be with a group of amazing artists from all around the world is, uh, is really fantastic. Very inspiring. When you go from one room to the other, you go into another piece of art. 
and it's for the artists. I mean, they are totally free with what they design, but there has to be a bed. That's the only obligatory thing. It can be any kind of expression. Of course, in the daytime, it's like an, an artwork. It's an exhibition. In the nighttime, it's a hotel room, and that's how it works. That's the ice hotel. They have just 24 hours to finish, and the room is nowhere near ready. There's not really any prep you can do until you get here. You can kind of figure out what you think you need. The support team have been brilliant in kind of talking us through how much ice we'd need to order for the room and all the logistics, so that was really helpful. Um, but you can't really do anything until you arrive. One hundred and fifty-five miles north of the Arctic Circle, guests who choose to stay at the Kaxlautenen Arctic Resort in Finnish Lapland come for the tranquility of staying in the middle of the Arctic Forest. Last year we had 85 different nationalities and when all the way they come to Arctic Circle, you see our boss always encourages our guest to walk in the nature. He always used to say, our guests should detox digitally and then they have to walk around and inhale the fresh air, connect to the nature, and this is what we encourage. This resort was opened over 45 years ago by owner UC Eremo, who started by opening a small coffee shop. Today, the hotel offers 650 beds in a variety of different accommodations, over 600 hectares, split into an east and west village. Hello, good evening. Hello. How are you? In his 70s, UC is still actively involved in the day-to-day -day running of the hotel. I always tell our team members, you see, go to bed to wake up in the morning to again come to the resort, come to Kaxlauten. And this is how dedicated he is. And that is what motivates all of us when we see him. Winter has finally arrived here. A relief as most guests come to experience the extremities that Lapland has at this time of the year. But it's these conditions that make things more challenging for the team at the hotel. Between the 1st of December and the 3rd of January, the region experiences polar nights where it's dark for the majority of the day. It's 7 a.m. and overnight the hotel experienced a heavy fall of snow. Here Lapland is very pure nature and cold and lots of snow. I like nature and I think it is a very <laughs> lovely place. In the dark and in minus nine degree temperatures, the hotel's staff are responding to the weather. Fire is on and then I look here. This has to be open. If it's not, I open it. Hannah is part of the maintenance team and is warming up one of the cabins ahead of a guest check-in. I do this job with my husband, so we are family business. <laughs> a few hours later, General Manager Jyoti Naluri is inspecting some of the accommodation ahead of the new guest arrivals. Ahead of Jyoti's inspection, the hotel's room service team are stocking up for a busy morning of cleaning. They're on their way to the East Village, to the Glass Igloos, around 400 metres away from the main reception. So they'll need to make sure they have everything they need or it's a lengthy trip back. The hotel's location makes for a unique way of getting around. Everybody who living here, they have own sleds also here. And also our uh, housekeeping team used also the sleds here. That is normal here in Lapland. It's Linda Reginska from Latvia's first season working at the hotel. First we're going to go to the eight and then we go to the seven. Okay. 
When we come into the igloos, we check how many people stayed, of course, change bed linen, uh, do the toilets, hoover the floor, mop the floor, check the beds all the time, because if they are not working, we need to tell the maintenance. These glass igloos may provide guests with an unspoilt view of nature, but it doesn't make it easy for the housekeeping team. Here's no space to do. Only two people can come inside and clean, and we need to do it fast. So yeah, the, it's like cozy and nice for someone, but our job it makes more difficult to do. The people react to the igloos they like this, they are shocked when they see this. I've seen the Northern Lights in here a few times. It's like so beautiful. It's green, it's pink, it's red. It's like in all colors. So we are finished with this one. We will go to the next igloo. While the cleaning team continue with their duties, General Manager Jyoti has arrived in the East Village. Mr. Yusi Airamo have invented glass igloos for the first time in the East Village. In the year 1999, he have come up with the idea and he put up prototype glass igloos and we are looking at them now. We are now in a small glass igloo where it is comfortable for two guests. This is why UC have built a luxury Kalo glass igloo because the space out here is a lot smaller and uh, Kalo glass igloo have a combination of log, log chalet and glass igloo together. But I personally really like this because look at the view, it's beautiful. And uh, the, the main concept behind is for our guests to sleep and view northern lights all night long. Bed actually can move up and you can also put your feet up if you choose to. They are designed to be as comfortable as possible while northern lights are up, our guests can actually comfortably view them. The igloos are also fitted with something rather unusual. Here we have our uh, Northern Lights Alarm. We have uh, installed it actually this year. Northern Lights Alarm concept is to wake up our guest when the Northern Lights are up there. And it is centralized system. All 213 units are hooked up to it. And our reception team, when Northern Lights are up there, we ring the bell and once guests wake up, if they want to silence it, they have a button to silence it. While the race is on to complete the new season's ice hotel for tomorrow's opening, at the permanent hotel on site, 365, guests still get to experience a chilled stay. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Thank you very much. We have a room booked. With 20 rooms, this hotel has a permanent structure, but the rooms are still made of snow and ice, giving guests a similar experience to Sister Hotel 29, but meaning they can visit all year round. While Anton shows these guests where they'll be staying, work is continuing at a steady pace at 29. Still resembling a building site, they're going to have to work continually to make it on time. Anton from Guest Services has to explain to all new visitors how to sleep in sub-zero temperatures at Hotel 365. In the inside here, it's a lot warmer than outside, as you can feel. It's only, it is warmer. It's only minus five in here. Christoph Fizinus, the hotel's general manager, says the creation of Hotel 365 with its permanent infrastructure has allowed guests to experience sleeping in the cold all year round. Our concept is very much about offering a, a, a cold experience at night. That offer our guests this real experience close to the nature, close to more a sim simplicity, actually, in, in, in the in the sleeping experience. And sometimes they are uh, um, surprised to, to, to be confronted to such a simplicity, but, uh, but such also the, the fact of being uh, in a room uh, filled with arts, because that's the real nature of our concept, is to mix hospitality and, and sleeping experience with art. Wow. 
Yeah, so this is where you'll be spending the night. And uh, you have your bed up here by the ice stairs. So you need to be a little bit careful because the you know, stairs are made of ice. So this is what your bed here in the ice hotel looks like. And it's a normal bed. The only difference is we have waterproof sheets. And then we have rain depelts. And the rain depelts you sleep on top of. So they insulate you from the bed. And there's a normal bed, it's minus five here, so the bed is cold. Okay. When we created the 365, we wanted it to be as much of the feeling of, of the winter hotel, the ice hotel, as possible. It should be the same, but it's not the same. I mean, this is a permanent structure. It doesn't go change, it doesn't melt, it doesn't go lower during the season, and, uh, and there's a constant temperature all year. Some of the art suites, including this one, don't have their own bathroom. So guests who choose to stay here use communal facilities, which can be a bit tricky when you're wrapped up for bed. This is uh, what the sleeping bag looks like. This is uh, quite long, and the sleeping bag has a central zipper here. So when you're ready for bed, you can zip it all up. Then uh, you get a liner that you put inside of the bag. Well, it's kind of like a pillow casing for a human being. So I right. recommend you get into the liner first. Okay. And when you're in the sleeping bag, you zip everything up. Like this. Good. All right, so now you know everything you need to know to get a comfortable night's sleep here. Down the hall, creative director Arn is seeing if the guests have checked out of one of the luxury suites. These suites offer guests the best of both worlds. They sleep in an ice room, but have a warm and heated bathroom. So this is a luxury suite done by Vitautas and Kestutis from Lithuania. And uh, yes, I think the guests have checked out. You can see that. And uh, here are the champagne glasses. And this, this um, champagne glass, it has the character, you know, when you drink out of the river, you drink out of an ice block. It's not, it's not casted or molded, it's like the natural Torna River. You just, uh, so it should be rough but elegant. So that's why I made this design of the glass. So you use this once. I mean, if you buy the drink, you buy the glass and you could have a refill, but then it's going back to nature. So now let's go into the bathroom. So here first we have a door, it leads into a locker. So you have to go into the locker. They said, oh, they haven't checked out. <laughs> <laughs> and so I want to show you another bathroom. Let's hope this one has checked out. Come on. These art suites change twice a year, but the bathrooms are permanent fixtures and offer guests the chance to get out of the cold. So this is the locker, because you have to have like a locker where it is with the temperature in between the cold and the warm. So everybody has to go inside before you can open the other door. So of course you got the best of the, both worlds, you know, you have the cold and you have the warm and you have the, the champagne, the, the ice glass, you could either have it in, in, in your suite or you could be in the, in the warm bathroom. You can even be in the bath with the ice glass and let it melt there or in the sauna. That's the contrast. These rooms cost more. They start at over 700 pounds a night. But for those wanting extra comfort, the additional expense might be worth it. So you could say that the guests who stay in the, in the ISTO 365, they have the best of both worlds, you know, both the cold and the warm. Back in Finland, and with snow thick on the ground, the hotel is in full Christmas spirit. One of the main reasons families come to Lapland and to the Kaxlautenen Arctic Resort this time of year is for their Santa experience, where children get to meet Santa and feed the hotel's reindeers. Maria Lopez from Chile is on her way to the hotel's celebration house, where the Santa experience culminates. She needs to get into character before the guests see her. This is Maria's second season at the resort, and she's in high demand as one of Santa's elves. A guest has booked for a private tour to meet Santa, and it's Maria's job to ensure they receive the full experience. 
all our guests love fantasy and happiness and all this Santa's visit activity. I need to do this really nice so they can feel the magic around. So this makeup needs a lot of preparation and also for sure kids love the makeup and the fantasies. It's just nice. I really like it because they feel so happy when they saw me with the beautiful faces. When I was a little girl, my dream was to see the northern lights. That's why my fairy tale name is Aurora. It takes time transitioning into character, but for Maria, it's all worth it. The best part of my job is to see the beautiful face of the little kids when they hug me or when they saw Santa. I need to prepare everything in Celebration House because when we finish the Santa's visit, our guests will be frozen because outside is so cold. So I need to make nice this place. I need to be fast. I don't have so much time to do this. Maria has just found out that the guests are waiting in reception. They've paid over £500 for this private experience and shouldn't be kept waiting. OK, I'm preparing my basket to feed the reindeers. Now I can go with my full basket. I need to wear my gloves because outside is cold. So now I'm ready to the action. Everything is fine, yes. Meanwhile, General Manager Jyoti has left the East Village and is on her way to check out the hotel's most famous accommodation, the Kalo Glass Igloo. We are now going to our West Village, which is four kilometres away. And I'm going to show you our Kalo Glass Igloo premium accommodation. December is one of the hotel's busiest periods. It's important that every room is up to standard. This is how uh, our regular day is, since I manage both the areas, east to west, we often drive back and forth. It takes about seven minutes for me to get to West Village, uh, four kilometers, but then again, we have no traffic like we do in other parts of the world. So um, two kilometers on the road and two kilometers into the forest, we are already there. At this time of the year, we get more or less just two hours of daylight from the time when we started. Um, viewing our glass igloo to now, you can already see it's getting dark. And this is the best time of the day when you get your pictures. It's beautiful, nice blue color pictures you get. The Kalo Glass Igloo is most popular for families or groups wanting the comforts of a log cabin, but the experience of sleeping in an igloo. Here we have a king size bed, in the Kalo, we have a couple of beds in the glass igloo, as you can see here. We want to people to see the northern lights in warm place and in bed. And then we building the glass igloo like here. Here is two beds, motorric beds, moving beds. And the glass is a, a thermoglass the glass heating all igloo and also the glass heating outside the glass. It's what's in the bathroom that surprises most guests who stay here. Most of our guests are really surprised to see the sauna. All the family can comfortably stay together and do sauna in the evenings. The Kalo glass igloo is more comfortable for families. The hotel's insistence of having a sauna in every accommodation is culturally significant for its owner, Yussi. Sauna is uh, in Finnish culture, so sauna is holy place for us. Example, my grandmama and papa are born in sauna. And also when people die, we bring before that's in sauna and cleaning body and after that's a ceremony. We want to uh, show and bring our culture for everybody in the world. Back 
in Sweden, Anton is keen to see how the guests he checked in last night got on sleeping in the minus five degree temperatures at Hotel 365. Wake up with the phone, so they get a little bit surprised that they well, cannot uh, take their phone out with them and use that to wake them up. But as the rooms are minus five, the phone is just, uh, well, it's gonna stop functioning basically. So instead we wake them up with the hot lingonberry juice and make sure they had a <laughs> survived the night. So my back here, I have our lingon juice dispenser and it's a big backpack full of hot lingonberry juice and we use it to wake up all the guests in the hotel. And it's made from a local berry called lingonberry. The story behind it, and because we love stories here, when the Swedish army uh, were the first one to sleep in, in an igloo, a form of igloo, and our founder uh, in the morning woke them up with a lingonberry juice. And from that moment, we kept this tradition to wake our guests with the lingonberry juice. While Anton makes his way to the hotel, things are already busy with the turnaround service. Housekeeping. During the day, the hotel becomes an art gallery for day guests who visit just to see the art suites. It's Jenny's job to ensure that she cleans the room quickly after the night guests have checked out. Today, I'm cleaning. We go into the rooms and take away the sleeping bags and we fix the rooms because after 10 o'clock, um, the hotel turns into a museum. So day visitors and the guests that are staying here in the hotel comes over and have a look around to all these beautiful rooms we have here, the art and everything. So the difference between uh, cleaning a regular hotel room and uh, ice hotel rooms is that if someone, for example, is having a drink and they spill it on the ground, then we need to use one of these ones uh, to dig it up. You get quite strong about working at this hotel. Cleaning this hotel room is unlike any other in the world. We use this little brush to clean up the beds too, because as you can see, the whole room is covered with snow, so sometimes it falls down on the bed, so it's good just to make sure that there's nothing on the bed. I slept in the hotel at least six or seven times. I forgot the counting. Um, I can't tell people that you will survive a night in here if I haven't done it too. So I think it's very important. Now we're done with this room. So I'm just gonna put my stuff back here. It's early and in the dreamscape room, Anton is about to wake up the guests. At most hotels, guests wake up whenever they want but things are done a little differently here. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, good morning. This is the wake up call. Would you like some hot lingonberry juice? All right. Do you sleep well out here in the cold? Yeah, we did. Yeah, well, that's good to hear. You survived the night. Obviously, yeah. it's an experience by itself. Once you have done it, that's enough. But it's so special, so fantastic that you, you remember it forever. Oh, they are a little bit uh, cumbersome to get out of the sleeping bags, but uh, did they keep you warm all night? Yeah. Well, that's great to hear. And uh, well, I hope you have a oh. lovely day. Thanks. Thank you very much. What time is it? Uh, it's eight o'clock now. Okay, good. Thank you, did you sleep well? Yeah, it was good. Me too, that was a good night. For guests wanting to experience more than just what it's like to sleep on a bed made of ice, the hotel has several activities on offer. For those who dare brave the minus 25 degree weather, the hotel puts on a skidoo excursion that takes guests out onto the frozen river Torn. So welcome to the ice sculpturing of today. These guests are learning more about what you can do with an ice block in today's ice sculpting class.
you can have a real um, deepening into the lifestyle of the, of the Arctic uh, environment. Uh, and it's about the weather, the climate, the, the, the ice, the snow that we are surrounded with, all the activities that we offer in the winter, but also during the summer. That's the Arctic experience that we want people to enjoy when they come here. At the Kaxlautenen Arctic Resort in Finland, Maria is finally ready to start her Santa experience. Hello, good morning! Hi, hello, good morning everybody! Hi! <laughs> Who is coming with me to see Santa today? Hello. Wow. The Jeffreys from the UK have paid over £500 so that they and their son Luke can have a private Santa experience. Uh, so, it's okay for you like this? Or you want more fast? More fast! <gasps> He'll get to meet Santa and feed the reindeer. Yes! <laughs> Aurora is one of our favorite elves from Santa's team, and she amuses being with children, being, being with Santa, and she does a great job. Yes, we're, we're gonna go, friends. but we're gonna go together, yes? Because we are really good friends. Yes. Hello, Santa, good morning. This look is my new best friend in this world. Yes. She's Indeed. so nice and sweet boy. Oh. Oh, we're going to give Santa a hug. The experience has its challenges, but it's Maria's job to ensure that the children enjoy themselves. Follow my instruction. Don't worry, don't feel scared. Yeah! Yeah, he looks like his They also walk to the celebration house and um, have their gingerbread cookies, have a break, and that is where they end it. So this is the most attraction for our guests to visit us. Dad, please, welcome. Mrs. Close, bake this delicious biscuit to share with you now. Oh, yeah. that's, nice. <laughs> that's nice, isn't it, mm -hmm. With this heart <laughs> shape. Yes. <laughs> Maria may have finished her tour for the day, but over in the Sami village, the hotel's preparing for one of their most popular attractions, the reindeer safari. The safaris run by the indigenous Sami people. They work with the hotel to provide authentic experiences for guests. Our Sami guides uh, offer this activity. They come over, meet the guests. Once they arrive to the farm, they introduce the reindeers and they explain how the activity works. And here we have Yarko. Say hello, everybody. Everybody sit in the sledges and off they go into the forest. Feels like uh, you can experience in olden days how these reindeer herders were uh, using reindeer sledges as their main transportation. Are you comfortable? Very. Yeah. Let's go. With the sleigh ride underway, Karina Arstad has to race to set up the teepee, so everything's prepared before the guests arrive. She only has 15 minutes, and the vastness of the hotel's grounds means she has to get there the quickest way she can. This is a very nice experience for our guests to learn about culture, about Sami culture. They stop halfway through in a little teepee with open fire, and uh, do a small coffee break. They also share their uh, culture and they explain about how uh, Sami people were living in the past and how they are settled down now. Now they are not nomading any longer. With the sleigh ride complete, the guests get to learn more about the Finnish Sami culture in the warmth of the teepee. So, welcome everybody to our lavu in the woods. And uh, now we are going to talk a little bit about Sami culture. 
So uh, we are representing the Sami people, indigenous for Lapland, northern part of the world. We are approximately, it's really great because it also helps us to keep our culture intact. And also because we are proud of our lifestyle and our culture. Uh, no, only like this. It's uh, really good that this resort offers uh, that kind of activities because of the yeah showing people around the world how our lifestyle was before. Back in Sweden, and with just a couple of hours left until the Ice Hotel 29's official opening, father and daughter Jonathan and Marnie Green from London have finally finished their room. We feel exhausted and elated, I think. It's been an incredible journey, really, and uh, a lot happened in the last 48 hours to get us to where we are now. Yeah, no energy left. No, it's really, yeah, we feel really quite exhausted. It's been absolutely amazing. Like, it, it, it was really liberating to me to work with such a different material. And as I'm only 19, it's really exciting to get to try different things. And I'm still just starting out, experimenting. And it's a good place to be. And having this at my disposal is amazing. Having been here and experienced this and completed the project, I would say this is without doubt one of the most unique hotels in the world. Jonathan and Marnie may have finished their room, but it's still a race against time if the hotel is to make its deadline of opening at six this evening. I think everything is quite good. I mean, I think we managed to pull it off. Every room is done. There might be some small adjustments in some, some of the rooms. So I'm happy about it. Hope there's a lot of people today. So they will see what we have done. I think it's good. We pulled it off. We're a great team and uh, yeah, it's we're good. used to this. Excitement outside is building and the hotel is finally ready. To stand here today is amazing to see that it's all functioning up there. The rooms are ready and we can go inside and see the beauty. And I won't describe the art inside in, when you come there. You have to see yourself and uh, look around and uh, experience the different rooms. Thank you very much. Welcome. This is the first time that anyone, including the artists, have seen the finished hotel. It's been hard work and the slow winter hasn't helped, but they've made it and the Ice Hotel is officially open for business. This part of the world offers visitors a truly authentic holiday. Extreme weather and dark cold winters may provide unique challenges. Welcome to the fridge uh, in the north of Sweden. But for those looking for a holiday unlike any other, it also offers something very different. Together we're gonna go to meet Santa! Woohoo! And the concept of building a hotel out of ice, which becomes an art exhibition by day and is rebuilt every year, means that the interest in this hotel will continue year in, year out. We're never bored with the ice hotel. It's always new, it's always uh, exciting and it's always beautiful. And in Finland, the wilderness location of this hotel has enticed guests who are looking for a remote experience to truly get back to nature. When all the way they come to Arctic circles, they have this opportunity to walk and uh, nature is so pure. What both hotels do successfully is use the extreme conditions to their advantage, providing guests with an experience unlike many others in the world.